Samuela. There's a certain character I have avoided talking about on this channel. A character with lore so deep and so complex that no one has been able to decipher their dialogue in any way that makes coherent sense. I am of course talking about none other than Menderbug. I am really at a loss on how to tackle this guy, so instead I'm going to pass the buck and talk about another character, the Mask Maker. The Mask Maker is an NPC found in Deep Nest. They are voiced by Ari Gibson, and oddly enough, they spend their time making masks. Since pretty much everything Mask Maker says is cryptic, we're going to go through every line and decipher it the best we can. So buckle up boys and girls, because it's time for some deep speculation. The first line from Mask Maker brings up the question of masks in Hallownest, saying it's hard to tell who is and who isn't wearing a mask. Well, the dreamers are definitely wearing masks. If we can't agree on that, this is going to be a long video. Same for the members of the Grim Troop. We even get to see Brum with and without his mask. The God Seekers appear to be wearing masks as well. And then there's the bugs in the Colosseum of Fools. They look like they might be wearing masks too. Out of all the faces in the game, these are probably the closest ones to what the Mask Maker actually creates. Unfortunately, this is all visual, so there's no text to confirm this 100%. There are a bunch of characters we could talk about that might also be wearing masks, but whether or not we agree on those, there are definitely creatures in Hallness that don't wear masks, and I'd say that would be the majority of them. At the very least, the masks that the Mask Maker is making aren't being worn by many of the bugs we see in Hallownest. The Mask Maker's next line tells us that not everyone is born with a face, so for those people, the Mask Maker will provide masks. They then imply that a face is needed for one to define, focus, and exist. My interpretation of this dialogue is that a face is a metaphor for a being that has sentience. The bugs of Hallownest are incredibly diverse, meaning that some bugs might not be as capable at higher thought as others. An example of this would be the spiders in Deep Nest. Midwife calls them the most intelligent species, or in other words, more intelligent than other enemies in the game. So my theory is that some of these bugs with weaker minds need masks in order to have greater control of themselves. Honestly, I feel like this is pretty speculative, but it's really hard to make sense of this weirdo. At one point the mask maker says, Faces I grant to all who'd request. So if you need a face to exist, how do you request a face in the first place? What the fuck Team Cherry? You're destroying my brain here. Anyway, masks give bugs sentience. While I don't have much proof outside of this dialogue, it does seem to line up with what happens with the Pale King. From the lore tablet in the White Palace throne room, we know that the Pale King became a beacon for the bugs of Hallownest, resulting in an expansion of their minds. So in other words, the Pale King was able to achieve the same effect as the masks without making his subjects wear them. Regardless of whether this is true or not, it does seem like the Mask Maker is entirely unrelated to the Pale King in any way. The Mask Maker lives in Deep Nest, outside of the Pale King's domain, and the Mask Maker has knowledge of events that happened before the Pale King's rule. The need for masks was probably greater in the time before Hallownest, so it makes sense that a being like the Mask Maker would have popped up during that time. Now you might be questioning how the Mask Maker could have been alive for so long, but remember, time in Hallownest is weird as fuck. According to the Elder Bug, the stag stations were closed before he was even born. So if we assume that the stag stations didn't close until the fall of Hallownest, that means that Hornet is actually older than Elderbug. Let's dive deep into that Quarrel comic Team Cherry released. It gives us an idea about what life outside a kingdom looks like. Featured in the comic is a character named Boone. Boone speaks with few words, and the structure of his sentences are strange. Contrast that with Tuck, a bug we meet in the Royal Waterways. These bugs are pretty similar looking, implying that they are the same species, but Tuck is much more articulate in his dialogue. This is probably due to the effects of the Pale King. The lore tablet in the Howling Cliffs agrees with this, telling us that entering the lands beyond Hallownest results in the loss of the mind granted by the kingdom. There is also the corpse at the edge of Howling Cliffs that says, No king, no mind, release. Now you could argue that Boone is just a man of few words, but the dude talks in the third person. That's always a sign that something is wrong upstairs. And then the question of Quirrell comes up. He doesn't lose his mind outside of Hallownest, just his memory. So what causes this? Well, he does have Maldamon's mask, 
and maybe his face is also a mask as well. Or maybe Quirrell just has a mind of his own and doesn't need anything to keep his sentience. I do think his time outside of Halnest is what made Quirrell lose his memory, but his mind remained intact. So yeah, this shit is really confusing and I don't have a definitive answer, but this is the most coherent case I think can be made. I think that masks are somehow tied to granting bugs sentience, which is why the mask maker feels so obligated to create them. So the mask maker is apparently hooked on their own goods, because the mask they are wearing can change whenever you enter the room. It's a pretty neat detail, but more importantly you can use Desolate Dive to knock their mask completely off. This gives us a better look at the mask maker's eyes, revealing one of the worst cases of glaucoma I have ever seen. We'll get into the weird eye thing in a minute, but more importantly, knocking mask maker's mask off gives us additional dialogue. The mask maker tells us that they might just be wearing another mask underneath this one, like they're some sort of clever Scooby-Doo villain. Then the mask maker tells us that truth in Halonest is always buried deep. Yeah. No shit. The mask maker then says the following, to change a face, to conceal it fully within another, a powerful protection that is, but one with sad consequence. The original mind is destroyed, though those of striking will may still retain a sliver of that concealed self. My view surrounding this dialogue is that it is relating to the relationship between the shell and the shade of the night. The face of the shade is being concealed within the face of the shell. This results in the shade being protected but at the cost of the being that once inhabited the shell. The original mind might be referring to the mind of the vessel that died, which the concealed self is the shade concealed inside the shell. This theory makes more sense when we look at the mask maker's dream nail dialogue. They refer to the shade as the face that hides beneath. At this point, I should probably bring up the idea that the void might have a mind. Basically, the void is capable of doing things. The best example is when it calls out to the bug in the lighthouse, telling it to turn off the light. Another argument for this is that Team Cherry removed a line of dialogue that reads, Void Given Mind, from the latest DLC. The reason they removed this is because Void already has a mind, the argument goes. So in this interpretation, original mind would be referring to the mind of the shade. It's an interesting idea, but I don't really know if there's enough evidence for it. Another theory is that the dialogue is referring to how Quirrell's mind was destroyed by wearing Monomon's mask. This kind of fits, but I have two problems with it. First off, I think Quirrell's memory loss has more to do with leaving Hallownest. Second, Quirrell's mind wasn't destroyed, he just lost his memory. It is possible, but I'm not convinced. If you talk to the Mask Maker after getting the King's Brand, they will talk about the ancient caste that once tried and failed to rule over all of Hallownest. We don't know much about the ancient civilization that existed before Hallownest. From Relic Seeker Lem, we know that this civilization created the Arcane Eggs and the Soul Totems and that they worship the Void. I could go into more detail on this, poring over every little bit of information we have about the civilization, but I have too much of a life for that shit. As for right now, this line of dialogue tells us that the Mask Maker is knowledgeable about past events, either because they were told about these events, or because they were alive during those events. Like I said earlier, I think it's the latter. The Mask Maker's next dialogue can be triggered by acquiring the Shade Cloak. The Mask Maker will talk about the Worm's great shame, and the creation of the vessels. They then mention that the stasis of Halonest is the Pale King's legacy. When the Pale King sealed the radiance inside of the Hollow Knight, he did so as an attempt to keep Halonest in an eternal stasis. This is spelled out in the lore tablet in the King's Workshop. The tablet explains that the Pale King hoped to use the Void to deny time. Halonest was placed in a sort of stasis by the Pale King, placing the radiance inside of the Hollow Knight. By doing this, the Pale King hoped to keep Halonest lasting eternal. This lines up with a lot of dialogue we can find in the game. Seer tells us that the kingdom is in a slumber. Both Hornet and Vespa mention that there was an attempt at perpetuation. The statues in the City of Tears and in the Resting Grounds mention that Halonest will last eternal thanks to their sacrifices. The lore tablet in the White Palace Throne Room says, Eternity and promise, and charged in progeny cursed. Or in other words, Halones can last eternal because the Pale King used his children to create a vessel. Maldemon describes the world as a world forever unchanging. The developer's notes also lay this out plainly. Finally, the Radiance's line, Dawn shall break, is a reference to the ending of the long night that Halones is trapped in. Of course, time still moves in Halones, but you know, it's like a metaphorical thing. Like when you say, break a leg, or... I don't have any STDs. In their last line, the Mask Maker explains that they make masks as a gift to a world deserving. What a nice fella. 
Anyway, that's it for dialogue, but there's more going on here that we need to talk about. There's a clear connection between the Mask Maker and the Void. The most obvious example is the Mask Maker's eyes. It appears as though there's voids swirling around in there. There are also black streaks coming from their eyes, similar to the bugs found in the ancient basin. And there are black particles floating around the room, a dead giveaway that Void is around. There's one other aspect worth mentioning. The files for the artwork in the Mask Maker's room use the phrase Egg Chamber. You can see the egg shape a bit from the outside of the room. There's also a bunch of chains and scaffolding, but I don't really know what that's about. My guess is the egg is similar to the egg inside of the Temple of the Black Egg, which was used to contain the Hollow Knight. Hornet explains that the egg is used to sustain the Void Beings, and that its bindings would drain her if she were inside. In the Dream No More ending, the entire egg begins to dematerialize, and we see pools of Void seep out of the temple. So it seems like the egg itself is made of void. So is the egg chamber that the mask maker inside of also made of void? This would explain the particles, and maybe the mask maker is an example of a creature being drained by the egg. I'm guessing that the process happening to the mask maker is similar to what happened to the bugs in the ancient basin. An exposure to void is causing the mask maker to become filled with void. This theory of mine does leave us with a few questions. Why does the mask maker not seem to care? Isn't getting consumed by the Void a bad thing? Well, maybe not. No Eye seems to be accepting of the Void, and she seems like a pretty reasonable woman. Is the Mask Maker trapped in the egg? Did someone put them in there, or are they there by choice? They don't seem to have any interest in leaving. Does wearing a mask help them survive the Void? Regardless, I think this egg chamber is the reason we are seeing the influence of the Void around the Mask Maker. And that's all I can think to say about the Mask Maker. To sum up my speculations, the Mask Maker creates masks to help other creatures become more sentient. They probably predate Hallow Nest and the Pale King's rule, and they live inside of a void egg, similar to the egg found in the Temple of the Black Egg. I'm not sure if this video really provided many answers, so much as it just raised more questions. This Hollow Knight lore shit is getting too complicated. I think I'll switch over to Fortnite lore.